Coming up tonight, bar mission to receive $16 million facelift. Trade officials converge at Nandi Meet and study reveals how people understand good governance. Good evening, I'm Sandra Asan. Ba Mission Hospital will receive a $16 million facelift in the coming years and plans are underway to raise these funds. This was confirmed to the Prime Minister of Orenge Bainimarama by the Commissioner Western Commander Joeli Dawaki. The Prime Minister was concerned of the difficulties faced by staff of the Nailanga Health Centre during the recent floods which swept through the morgue, nursing quarters and the health centre. PM Bainimarama was told that even landslides were being witnessed during the merciless flooding. During the flood year, we were on standby here. There was from Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. We were on call 24 hours because the Namosa Bridge was flooded and patients couldn't get across. So we had to be on standby to cover for all the patients that came through this way. He requested options whether the health centre could be relocated to safeguard lives of the medical professionals, including those visiting the centre. The Nailanga Health Centre services the people from Matawalu, Votua, Nawangarua and Nailanga and is prone to flooding as it sits on the bank of the Mba River. Apart from the Mba Mission Hospital, there are only two health centres in Mba, the Nailanga Health Centre and the Mba Health Centre. Delegates from 14 Pacific Island countries converged at the Tanoa Hotel in Nandi this morning for a three-day Pacific ACP trade officials meeting aimed at further discussing issues relating to the Economic Partnership Agreement, which the Pacific ACP states are negotiating with the European Union. Fiji had initialed the interim EPA in 2007, followed by the signing in 2009, which was principally aimed at ensuring that our sugar exports in Europe were not disrupted. Attorney General and Minister for Trade, Aya Said Gaum, in delivering government's opening address this morning, said that Fiji had yet to ratify the EPA because the Mbainimarama government wanted to pursue a more strategic approach when considering the long-term impact of such an agreement. The interim EPA, as it currently stands, fails in this regard. Furthermore, the interim EPA contains several contentious issues that challenges our national sovereignty, con constrains our policy space, and has the potential to retard our development. It also contains issues unrelated to trade that should be appropriately addressed in other forums. These issues have to be removed or resolved before we can commit to the final agreement. You as trade officials have the important task to address these issues in the comprehensive EPA negotiations. Recent policy changes by the European Commission to withdraw market access regulations by the year 2014 will further place pressure on Pacific Island states concluding current negotiations. Minister Kayum adds that a strong message needs to be sent to the European Commission, reminding them that Pacific ACP member countries will not settle for any interim or temporary solutions as the delays on the conclusion of a full and comprehensive EPA was long overdue. It is also of concern that we have met the European Commission only once in almost three years and even that meeting was at an informal level. On the other hand, the EC has been regularly meeting the other ACP subregions at all levels, including at a, summit, at a summit level. If the PACP and EC are not able to sit across the table and have serious negotiations, how will the outstanding and contentious issues be resolved? In light of the regional mandate to concluding the negotiations this year, the three-day forum would be one of the last opportunities for Pacific ACP countries to firm up their positions and strategies which will need to be endorsed by their respective trade ministers before the meeting with the European Union later this year. A baseline survey for community education by the Citizens Constitutional Forum has revealed that people now understand what good governance is and have expectations for their leaders. Through close to 70 workshops the Citizens Constitutional Forum has been able to conduct, they found out that more and more people are now becoming educated on what good governance is all about. A baseline report launched today and which is titled Scratching the Surface was done in November last year in three provinces, Ra, Tai Levu and Neita Siri. CCF Chief Executive 
Reverend Aquila Yambaki says these three provinces were chosen as the people from the provinces were mostly involved in the political instability of 2000. According to the survey of close to 780 people, majority believed everyone had a say in decision making, a leader was to serve the people, a good leader should be ready to listen to criticism and that officials should inform the community of plans that affect them and should also be held accountable. According to the CCF, however, more work needs to be done. While the survey shows that significant ground has been made through our advocacy program to change attitudes on issues of good governance, human rights and citizenship, it also validates the need for continued advocacy on these three issues, good governance, human rights and citizenship in order to build an inclusive society which acts responsibly and recognizes the rights of all. These programs must go as soon as possible to the people on the ground so that by the time we have an election, people know that they, this is everybody's country, they all live together, they must care for each other. They must respect each other. And those are the, those are the basic tenets of, the, of a society that we want. Yeah? Coming up after the break, PM inspects post-flood reconstruction. Shaheen Ali appointed new Pacific ACP trade chair. And police caution parents on the need to teaching their children fire safety tips. <laughs> 